So welcome to our online service today. My name is Steve. I'm Rector here in Streatham Parish. And I'm Christy, Associate Minister. Good morning. And so as we begin, let's take a moment to be quiet. Creator of the heavens who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we're in our first Sunday in a new year. And so uh, hopefully last year people joined us on a journey of the Bible in a year. I know that for some of us it's been a a great year. We've continued. Um, For others we've kind of maybe paused, fallen by the wayside. But if you've uh, come to the end of your year we'd love to hear how it's been for you Um, so if you've done the bible in a year then do uh, let the office know of any kind of your stories what you found enlightening what the lord has said to you through it so that's office at streathamparish.org.uk but also if you're continuing it you know obviously we recognize that not everybody kind of kept up uh, the pace of it but if you're continuing it do let us know and we can continue to pray for you as you do that journey of the bible in another year Um, then that would be great so, as we come to our reading, I think, Chris, you're, you're reading those who've journeyed. I am. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he'd called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they'd heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So David, our curate, is going to unpack some of that for us um, with his talk. And afterwards, we'll have a time to respond with a song of worship. Today is Epiphany, the day when the church celebrates the visit of the wise men or the Magi to visit the young Jesus. We hear of them in Matthew's Gospel, and we are all no doubt, at least to some extent, familiar with the story of them following a star and then travelling from a long distance to offer their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Herod, who is jealous of Jesus, asked them to report to him when they found when they found him, so then he too can pay his respects. But they are warned in a dream to return home by a different route. And this also marks the end of Christmas and the traditional day of taking our Christmas decorations down in our homes. So during December, some of us may have heard of this nativity story. Again, we may have seen nativity plays. We may have seen uh, young people that we know in our lives or relatives acting out this story. And we may have had some of our wise wise men, our magi on camels. Um, But this time of year, it's also possible to take this story and the journey that the wise men took and almost view it as a child's story. This is something I preached on at Christmas. We can sometimes hear these stories so often and see them acted out so many times by children in school that we can sometimes forget what was actually being told to us. We can reduce it down to almost a sense of pantomime. 
it's one of the benefits of the lectionary where we have to revisit these stories. We have to think, what do these mean to us afresh? What did the people, what are the characters, what do they say to us? Despite us hearing it for many times in our lives, there's always something new and something different to be seen when we open up scripture. I think one of the interesting things that you can sometimes hear in some of the blessings at this time of year during Christmas services is that it can refer to the perseverance of the wise men. And it occurred to me that I didn't really necessarily understand what that perseverance would have looked like. Matthew says very little about the wise men, and we're not even sure where they came from. It's believed they may have come from Persia, an area that is now uh, near Iraq, Iran and Saudi Arabia. There are estimates that their journey could have taken anything from a few months to maybe even a year. Now, Matthew gives a few details of their journey, but we can perhaps assume it would have been fairly difficult. And it wouldn't have just been the three wise men. It would have been their camels and their attendants and all the people that would have been attending them on their journey. T.S. Eliot wrote a poem called The Journey of the Magi, in which he similarly imagines the journey they would have taken. He describes instances of their fires going out, the short snatches of sleep they all would have had, and he speaks of camel men cursing and grumbling, and the sense of voices singing in their ears the whole time saying that this was all folly. Now, whilst the poem is a fiction, we could perhaps start to imagine the sort of perseverance it would have taken to follow that star to an unknown location, despite the personal cost to them, materially, emotionally, and maybe even spiritually. Just as uh, another aside as well, this would have been a difficult journey. And we think of the kind of characters that these men and their attendants would have been. Also, another character in this story is Herod, King Herod. I was reading a few years ago during, during lockdown, uh, a book about the army of Herod the Great. And we also begin to realize that this is a fully rounded individual. He was a very capable military leader. He was involved in all the logistics. He was very much a field commander. He wasn't a king in the mold of other Hellenistic kings where he was an honorary head of an armed force, he was fully involved and he was a very ruthless and ambitious man. So when we hear that he wants to kill a potential rival in a future king, this is something quite a, it's quite a serious matter. Much like the wise men, we can almost review the character of Herod as something of the pantomime villain, uh, the impetus for the story, the vague danger that's looming in the background and the catalyst for our story. But he was a real person who was very ambitious and very capable. And so the world that Jesus was being born into was a very rough one and a very dangerous one right from the very beginning. Now back to the wise men and what makes their story even more remarkable is that they would not have even have been Jewish. They would have been outsiders from another part of the world who would have followed very different cultural and religious traditions. And they still recognised, however, the importance of the event that had taken place. And they still made it a priority to travel and pay respects to the Christ child. They would have most likely been very educated people and they were bringing very, very expensive gifts. And what's even more interesting is that despite the fact that they would have come from very different religious backgrounds at different parts of the world, they were still faithful when they heard the dream that told them to go home via a different route to avoid uh, to avoid King Herod. Even though they were of a different tradition, they were unknowingly carrying out God's plan as outlined in our reading from Isaiah. As it says in verse three, nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And at the end of verse six, they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. As we head into the new year, it's perhaps interesting and maybe useful to reflect upon the world that Jesus was born into. All the stories that we've heard over the Christmas period and today at Epiphany to dwell on these and to <clears throat> think of the danger and the sacrifice 
that God made by bringing his son into a world that was a dangerous one. The most fragile of beings, a human child, defenseless, brought into this world with ambitious, ruthless military leaders and being visited by hard, hardened travellers from different parts of the surrounding area all came to visit this small, defenceless child. As we go into this new year, it's my prayer that we can take something from these stories of perseverance, of faith, of following the star, even when things may be difficult. So it's my prayer that we can reflect on those things as we go into this day and the rest of our week. Amen. And so we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, creator of all things, by the leading of a star, you revealed your son to the nations of the world. Lead us also to a clearer vision of your presence. And today we thank you for those who carried your word to distant lands. Bless your church today, that she may shine with your son's light in this world. Be with all who lead your church for our archbishops, Bishop Richard, Archdeacon Fiona, 
Help them to speak your word in truth and power and care for the flocks entrusted to them. And we ask that you strengthen and encourage all who lead and teach here in Stretton Parish. You've called us to love one another and to work together with one heart and mind. And so we pray for our churches today. We thank you for those who serve here in Stretton Parish. We pray that each one will be strengthened and protected by your Holy Spirit. And we continue to pray for our parish mission partners for the Henbrys in Hull and for the Williams in the Czech Republic. How great is your power that you guide the nations of the world. In your mercy, bring oppression, violence and greed to an end, we pray. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ. And we continue to pray for situations in the world that need your peace and healing. We continue to pray for Israel and Gaza and Ukraine. And we pray especially for those who have been grieved, for those who suffer in mind, body and spirit through all that they have seen and heard. And we pray that you will strengthen the work of all relief organisations working in difficult situations across these lands. Eternal Father, we pray for all those who suffer. We lift those before you in need, those who are suffering ill health, those who are struggling with fear, loneliness, isolation or grief. And so in a moment of silence, we bring before you those known to us, And we pray for those that we have named, that they will be aware of your presence, feel your peace with them. And so we bring all our prayers together through the prayer that Jesus taught us, as we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we come to the close of our time, a final prayer of blessing. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts, reveal to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye-bye.